So my talk is called The Line Between Us is Not a Divider. And while I believe that it is important to have strong relationships between product design and engineering, today I'm going to focus on specifically on the relationship between UX design and product management, because I believe that there are some unique challenges that come from the overlap in some of our skill sets. So the friction. Building products that help people and that people love using is not easy. And as part of a development team, we often need to navigate the complex relationships of cross-functional teams where people are coming to the table with very different expertise and different perspectives. Sometimes uh, this can cause or result in um, the team suffering from friction and fractured relationships due to misunderstanding and lack of alignment. So the friction can be caused from a number of things. You know, it could be caused by um, thinking about who's responsible for representing the customer, who decides on the priorities, what scope gets cut, whose responsibility is it to interview, who decides on scope and approach. This friction can often result in us feeling like we're not part of a team and we're moving, I guess, to more towards being in competition with each other than as part of a team who's working towards a common goal. And so when we stop feeling like we're in a team where our expertise and perspectives are valued, we don't feel heard and we don't know why people don't understand our perspective. We end up feeling like we're butting our heads against a brick wall and feeling like, you know, I guess you'll eventually get it. So what's the problem that results from all of that? Well, when we start feeling like we're more in competition with each other than we are working together as a team, we stop bringing our perspectives to the table. We stop feeling like we can openly discuss a different perspective of what we believe is truly important to solving the customer's problem. We feel we can't be passionate about having a discussion about an idea or perspective for fear of being seen as being difficult and, or just not getting it. And when that happens, we don't feel aligned to the direction and approach that's chosen. And, we, and when that happens, we don't feel passionate about what we're doing and we don't bring our best work. And ultimately what results from that is that our customers suffer because we don't end up building the best product that we can together. Now, I love this quote by uh, Paul Rand, confusion and misunderstanding is the result of the absence of common language. And I really feel that this speaks to the heart of the problem. I believe that the tension doesn't result from us not valuing each other and the expertise and experience that we as designers and product managers bring to the table. It often results from the very different knowledge, base knowledge that we all start from. We often assume that everyone has the same information and knows what we know. So it's frustrating when we, it seems like the other person can't seem to, seem to get what we think is obvious. So how do we transform negative friction into positive tension? Well, the things that I have found through my experience uh, that makes a strong product and design partnership are empathy and valuing each other, shared context early and often, uh, regular communication, and trusted relationships. So when I think about empathy, I also think about equality. I think about really understanding and learning values, drivers, and challenges, much like we think about our customers and much like what we're trying to learn from our customers. It's important that we embrace and celebrate expertise and not be afraid of different perspectives. The reason that we can be a strong team is because we do have different perspectives and the perspectives that challenge us push and pull our ideas to become even better and push the boundaries of where they could actually even and, um, help us help lead us to. And, and co-working practices um, help to reinforce the everyday connection and uh, working practices together. So my own personal experience with this is that when I took on the responsibility for the first time of overseeing the UX research and UX design practice, um, being a product manager, I really didn't know how to lead the design team. I didn't, even having worked alongside them for so many years, I didn't know what was meaningful in their work. I didn't know what they valued. I didn't know what was important to them. And I didn't know what they needed to feel successful or to be feeling like they were doing the best work. So I spent a lot of time learning, reading books, going to meetups, talking to designers and design leaders, and spending more time with, on, with, 
on one-to-ones, talking with the designers on my team about what was working well, what was not working well, and what they needed. And I found two key things from those conversations. One is that I found that generally, um, designers didn't know how to get their ideas on the roadmap. When they found some key insights, they didn't know how to convince stakeholders that it was important and why. The second thing that I found was that they all felt that by the time they were looped into projects or initiatives, it was, it was so late. Like everyone had more context than, than they had. And so they were constantly feeling like they were playing catch up and they were not looped into a lot of the context that was already there. And so people assumed that they knew uh, what was already found. One designer said to me, without the right context, we can build a very usable wrong thing. And so that always stuck with me about, you know, how important it is to have the right information in front of you to make the right decisions. And I have seen designers, you know, passionately champion to go in one direction, you know, and when they realized that they were missing information, they knew that they would have changed um, the direction that they would have gone in. And so context is so important. So some of the things that I took away from all of this was that designers need to be brought into problem discovery early. We need to create a space at the table for design and designers needed to understand what was important to stakeholders to get buy-in. And so I set about implementing some processes that helped us really to adapt and be able to address some of these problems.